This lecture is part of an online algebraic geometry course on schemes, and we'll be covering the scheme associated to a graded ring S, which is sometimes denoted by proj S. This stands for projective scheme of S. Um, so to motivate this, we will first recall the projective variety of a graded algebra um, over K. So here K is going to be an algebraically closed field. And we're going to look at a finitely generated graded algebra over K. So this will be K X naught up to X N. And then we quotient out by some graded ideal I. And let's first start by looking at the case when we just take I to be zero. So we look at the case of um, n-dimensional projective space, which is associated to the graded ring kx0 um, up to xn. And what we're going to do is recall how projective space corresponds to this graded ring. First of all, we look at the points of projective space. These just look like um, x0 up to xn in projective coordinates where this is considered to be the same as lambda x naught up to lambda xn. And this is um, not all coordinates are zero. So these are the points of projective space. And what do they correspond to in this ring here? Well, they correspond to homogeneous maximal ideals um, among those um, in, 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 sorry, ma maximal ideals in the set of ideals not containing the ideal x naught up to xn. So I, I don't mean maximal ideals of this ring. I mean maximal ideals in this set here. Um, so maybe I should put maximal in inverted commas because we're not actually talking about maximal ideals of the ring. Um, for example, um, the point one zero zero corresponds to the ideal generated by x1, x2, up to xn, because these are the elements all vanishing at this point here. And of course, this isn't a maximal ideal of this ring because it's, um, it's contained in this ideal here, but it's, it's maximal among the set of homogeneous ideals not containing this. Um, next, we want to know what is the topology So we can have a base of open sets is going to be given by the sets df, where f is homogeneous um, and a degree greater than zero, and this consist of the maximal ideals, sorry, the, the, the ideals not containing F. Um, here, the, these are, again, they're not quite the maximal ideals of the ring, they're, they're these ideals here. For example, um, if F is X naught, then dx0 is just the set of all points um, um, with x0 not equal to zero. So you may as well take x0 to be one. So it would be these points here, which is isomorphic to the affine plane An. Um, in general, df 
is just the complement of uh, the hypersurface f not equal zero in n-dimensional projective space over k. And it's an affine open subset. So we've got the points and we've got a base of the open sets. Um, and finally, we want to know what are the regular functions on the open sets open sets u. So the regular functions on an open set u will denote it by O of u. And we're only going to define it for these special open sets. So O of d of f is going to be kx naught up to xn. And then we're going to invert f. And then we're going to take the degree zero elements. And you can see this works. For example, let's see what happens if we take f equals x naught. Then we take k x naught up to x n, x naught to minus one. And we want the degree zero elements of it. Well, every monomial here, um, every homogeneous monomial here can be multiplied by a unique power of x naught in order to make it have degree zero. So this is just essentially the same as k x um, naught x one up to x n. Well, I guess um, this is isomorphic to this. I, I, I guess strictly speaking, what we're doing is we're thinking of this as being k x one over x naught up to x n over x naught. You can sort of make x naught equal to one because you're just taking the degree zero elements. Um, so this gives us um, a locally ring space. We've defined uh, a set of points, a base for the open sets on the points, and we've defined a ring on um, a base of open sets, and you can check without too much difficulty that this satisfies the axioms for a locally ringed space. And we can also work out the stalk of a point corresponding to the ideal M. Um, it's not too difficult to figure out that this is just, um, you take K X naught up to X M, X N, you localize it at M and you take the degree zero point. So this means degree zero, and this means localize at M. In other words, invert everything not in this maximal ideal. Um, and this gives a one, almost one-to-one -one correspondence between finite dimensional graded algebras over K with no nil potents with projective varieties over K. Um, and this correspondence is given as follows. What you do if, is if you've got a finite dimensional um, graded algebra over K with no nil potents, it looks like K X naught up to X N modulo I. And this of course just corresponds to the subset of p to the n with i equals zero. Now, what we're going to do is just copy this construction for more general graded rings s. So we're going to take a graded ring s, which is sum over n greater than or equal to zero, of Sn. And um, first of all, S0 need not be a field. Secondly, 
S need not be finitely generated. And thirdly, S might have no potents. So um, just as we um, extended the definition, the, the correspondence between affine uh, varieties and certain algebras over fields to arbitrary commutative rings, we're going to extend the construction of projective varieties from graded algebras to a construction for arbitrary graded rings. So, so, so we still keep the ring to be graded. And now we just copy this construction. So the points of our um, scheme, well, we're going to call our scheme Proj S for the projective scheme of S in some sense. So the points of S, um, well, previously we took certain graded um, ideals that were maximal among the set of ideals not containing all positive things here. So we're going to take these to be prime ideals of S not containing sum over n greater than zero of S n. So, so this is an idea, this is a prime ideal of S, but we kind of want to throw it out. I mean, it, it, it kind of corresponds to the point of projective space with all coordinate zero, except this isn't actually a point of projective space. So we, so we throw it out. Um, so uh, that's the points. Now we want a base of open sets. The base is going to consist of sets DF, where F is homogeneous and degree greater than zero. And um, DF is going to be the set of primes as above, not containing F. So informally, we think of this as being the points where F does not vanish. Only of course, it's not really a set of points where F doesn't vanish because F isn't quite a function on, 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 on the points that we sort of pretend it is. Um, and finally, we want to define the um, regular functions. And we just copy the definition that we had for um, projective varieties. We just define O of D of F, one of our special basis sets, to be you take the ring S, then you invert F, and then you take the degree zero element. So this says we invert F, and this says we just take degree zero elements of it. Then um, Proj S is a scheme. And we're not going to verify this. It, the verification is straightforward, but involves checking lots and lots and lots of little conditions, which isn't terribly exciting. And it's rather similar to the check we did to show that if you take a, um, a commutative ring, then you get a scheme out of it. So I'll just leave this as an extended exercise. Um, and um, we can cover it by open affine sets. In fact, um, each df is an open affine subset um, isomorphic to the spectrum of this ring here, s f to the minus one zero. So we've got very good control over over this scheme. We we know explicitly what a, a large collection of open affine subsets are. Um, well, there are rather a lot of homogeneous polynomials, but we don't really need all of them. So if F1, F2, and so on generate um, sum over n greater than zero um, Sn as an algebra um, 
sorry, as an ideal over, uh, 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 so as an ideal, then, then proj S is covered by the sets DFI. So normally we only need a finite number of these, um, finite number of these sets to cover it. So for example, if we take K X naught up to X N, then uh, sum over N greater than zero of S N is generated by X naught up to X N. So we only need D X naught up to D X N to cover um, proj of S. So although it looks as if we're building this out of a vast infinite collection of open affine subsets in practice, we often only need a fairly small finite number of them. Um, so uh, notice that the variety of this graded ring isn't quite the same as the scheme of this projective ring. So if we take S equals K X naught up to X N, we can look at the variety Pn. And this is points um, just looking like that in, in n-dimensional space. So, so, so its points are just things of the form x naught up to xn, um, when this is, of course, the same as lambda x naught up to lambda xn. However, if we draw the points of the scheme Pn, corresponding to S, I guess of course we call this proj S, then we not only get all these points here, but it also has um, various other points corresponding to um, closed subsets, and it has a, um, a sort of large generic point and so on. Um, so, um, the scheme contains all the points of the variety, but it also contains points corresponding to irreducible subsets of dimension greater than zero. So it's not exactly the same. So um, let's look at this construction explicitly in the case when S is just um, the ring of polynomials in two variables over a ring R, then proj S will be covered by dx naught and dx1, because x naught and x1 generate this. Um, so we should work out what these are. Well, dx naught is equal to R x naught x1 x naught to the minus one, and then we take the degree zero elements of this, which is just R x one over x naught. So it's just polynomials in this variable here. And similarly, dx one is just polynomials in x one over x zero. And we want to know their intersection. So d x naught intersection dx1 is just dx0 x1, which is, we take polynomials in x0 x1, x0 to minus 1, x1 to minus 1 of degree 0, which is just all polynomials in x0 over x1 and its inverse. So we've got maps between these two rings and this ring, and this corresponds to having a map. Um, well, I'm getting a bit tired of writing x1 over x0, so I'll just call this y. So we've got a map from our spectrum of our y, y to minus 1, to spectrum of our y, and spectrum of our y. And uh, sorry, our y to minus 1. So these are two copies of the affine line, and this is more or less the affine line minus the origin. So we're gluing together two copies of the affine line over the affine line minus the origin in order to get P1 
in, in order to get product of S. Well, this is exactly the construction we had for P1 in the previous lecture. So product of S is just P1 of the previous lecture. So this construction generalizes the construction of the projective line we had to um, high dimensional projective space. Um, um, so as another example, let's just work out the points of um, P, K, N, um, where P, K, N is just going to be proj of K, X naught up to X, N. So this is a scheme that corresponds to n-dimensional projective space over K. And we want to think, what do we mean by the, 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 the we, we're taking the, the, sorry, not the points, the K-valued points. And the K-valued points, you might think of these as being the points from spec of k, which is a point, to p k to the n. But as we saw last lecture, this isn't quite right because this allows all sorts of funny automorphisms of k. So what we should really do is consider these both as schemes over the spectrum of k. In other words, we've got natural maps like this. And all we're looking at is, is morphisms from this scheme to this scheme that make this diagram commute. So these will be the, the k-valued points of p to the nk. And more generally, we can take points with any algebra over k. So if we have an algebra r over k, then we can look at map spectrum of r to spectrum of k to p k to the n. So we want to find all the maps here that make this commute. And this is why we write this apparently rather silly morphism from spec k to spec k, which is just the identity map. If we were just interested in the k-valued points, this would be kind of pointless. But we're also interested in more general r-valued points where r might be an algebra over k. And in this case, um, we still want um, this map to commute. It's, it's, it's again, eliminating silly automorphisms of K that we're not really interested in. Um, well, as we saw last lecture, even if for what the one dimensional line, these sorts of points can really be quite complicated for general R. So we'll just take R to be a local ring, which makes the calculation much easier. And the point is if R is a local ring, let M be a maximal ideal, then M is in the closure of all other points. So you remember a point of the spectrum of R is just a prime ideal and its closure is all the prime ideals containing it. And as M is maximal, M certainly contains it. So suppose we map spec of R to some scheme S. And suppose this scheme S is covered by open sets. What we do is we look at the image of M. So we, we look at this point F of M. And now all other points of, of R, their image, the, the closure of the image um, must contain F of M. So, the, so um, if um, F of M is in some open set, u, then f of spectrum of r is a subset of u. So this makes, this means we don't have this problem that the spectrum of r might not be contained in one of these open sets, but might, might, might pass through several of them, which, which makes it very complicated to work out what spec of r is. So anyway, we know, we know, we know that p r of n is covered by these open sets dx naught up to d, dxn. And dxi is just the um, ordinary spectrum of k, 
x naught over x1, sorry, xi, xi over xi, which is just one, xn over xi, which is just the affine space over k. So the, 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 the morphism from the spectrum of R to dxi are just given by um, um, points of R to the n, which we can write as um, R0, R1, 1. So this is in the ith position up to Rn. Um, and um, we have to glue these all together for the various different, we have to glue the copies of dx naught up to dxn together. And if you do this, we see that the points from spectrum of R to P K N that um, commute with the maps to spectrum of K just correspond to points R naught up to Rn where some our i is invertible, and this point is equivalent to the point lambda r naught up to lambda r n, where lambda i is invertible. So where lambda is invertible. So this is very similar to the usual definition of projective space over a field, except instead of saying all the r i's are non zero, we just say that at least one of them has to be a unit. In other words, these generate the unit ideal. So that describes the k valued points of projective space over k with values in any local ring. Um, in general, projective varieties over k kind of correspond to certain um, um, schemes over k of this form, a proj of uh, k x naught up to xn over i, where this ring has no nil potents. In other words, k is a radical idea deal. Um, again, I'm not going to write out the details of this because they're kind of routine and not terribly exciting. Morphisms of projective varieties V to W don't quite correspond to morphisms of schemes S to T um, because um, morphisms of schemes, as I said, allow the extra funny or things like automorphisms of K. So what you really want to do is look at morphisms of schemes that are over spectrum of the spectrum of K. So morphisms of varieties from V to W correspond exactly to morphisms of the corresponding schemes from S to T that make this diagram commute. Um, okay, next lecture will probably be a discussion of the functor of points associated to a scheme.